Um, yeah, I'd say it's a, it's a pretty different. Uh, we do definitely use the, the stories as our placeholders and our, and our points of uh, conversation. And, um, and we try to keep, uh, we try to do a lot less documentation. Creating requirements, creating artifacts that are requirements, things like screens, things like drawings, um, and, and some rich text, uh, but I try to keep it out of documentation. Um, really, we try to keep this big prioritized backlog, and so we don't mind when change comes in, as long as you can tell me where it fits in the grand scheme of everything else we're doing, and you can place it in, in the queue, uh, then I don't mind change showing up. Uh, it depends. Sometimes they can be. Uh, I'd say in large complex systems they rarely are. Mm -hmm. um, the concept of diagrams, screen sketches, and, and all of these other things that, that we traditionally uh, probably would have used, um, and maybe even some things that, that we haven't traditionally used, are all requirements in, in my eyes. So they're all artifacts. The user stories are the placeholders and the planable objects and the conversations uh, starters that I have to generate and create those other pieces. Uh, but really, it's uh, the requirements are anything I need to get to get the job done. Documentation fits just fine with Agile. Um, documentation and requirements, I believe, are, are different, and I think documentation should be uh, simply a byproduct of, of good development mm -hmm. and a byproduct of, of good requirements management. Um, for what I've found is that teams like maintenance teams don't really want uh, the old traditional uh, requirements documents. What they want is a maintenance manual and a maintenance documentation. Mm -hmm. So I see documentation essentially as um, deliverables, part of, the, part of the cycle for what we do, um, and, and a byproduct of uh, doing proper development. Uh, really what it boils down to is, again, we used to create these big uh, uh, specs up front, and we assumed that's what everyone wanted and what everyone would consume, right. um, but users can't use them. We still need user manuals. Maintenance people don't tend to like them. They want maintenance guides, um, and then so on and so forth. So, so really you know um, uh, that you're doing enough documentation um, when the users see value in the documents that you're producing, um, and they don't need any more documentation. I've uh, entered into a client that uh, was having a lot of trouble maintaining. They, they tended to take on any code that the different uh, uh, system integrators provided to them, mm. and they were having a lot of trouble maintaining that document. And what we found was uh, the big traditional projects were dumping two and three hundred page requirement documents on them that really didn't help them maintain mm. uh, the code or fix the defects that were found in production. And so we broke down and we got rid of all documentation to start. We built up artifacts, different uh, diagrams, uh, sketches, and, and uh, rich text pieces, mm. um, and then uh, we brought them in as part of the cycle, and we saw how we wanted to bring those different artifacts together, and what it came out was uh, we could produce mm. essentially a maintenance manual that was uh, much closer to about 50 pages, uh, much easier for them to consume mm. um, in a, in a non-document format in HTML, so it was searchable and clickable, and um, we, we found that the maintenance ability of that code, maintainability of that code, uh, was a lot better.